In today's video, we're going to go over the science section of the T7 exam, and we're specifically going to cover all of the chemistry topics that you will see on this section of the exam. Now, it is an important part. There are eight scored chemistry questions out of the 50, and this is the section that's a little more tricky for people. We have, A lot of us did not spend as much time on chemistry in high school, so we're kind of going back to the drawing board and we feel like we don't know what even we need to be studying, so that's what this video is all about. So before we get into it, make sure you check out the links in the description below. There are links to our T7 free practice test, the Smart Edition Nursing T7 online course, and the free study group on Facebook. All of those are really, really, really helpful resources and I wanna make sure you guys are taking advantage of them so that you can do as well as you can on the test. So let's get right into it. A lot of students who have taken the test, they'll kind of say there was so much chemistry on the test. And those extra questions sometimes may be unscored question and that's why it might feel like that. So, um, it, but you know, you're, you're, you're going to get eight and you might get more unscored questions, so it could seem like a lot, but um, you know, don't panic, don't worry, we're gonna give you everything that you need right here. Um, another thing not to panic about is that you do not need to memorize the periodic table for this exam. That would be pretty crazy if you had to memorize every single element on there. The way it works is that if an element's information is required to answer a question, the test will give you that specific element and the information for that element, but you do not need to memorize the whole periodic table. Whew, glad we got that one out of the way. Um, what you should expect questions on are going to kind of be in the subtopics of the atomic structure and the organization of the periodic table. Uh, properties of matter, states of matter, chemical solutions and the solubility curve, uh, chemical bonds, chemical reactions, and acids and bases. So let's go into each one of those a little more so that you know what you should be studying for these sections. Um, the first one is going to be the atomic structure and the periodic table. So what is an atom? You're going to need to know that. It's pretty basic. Um, understanding what the properties and characteristics of an atom are, understanding the parts of an atom, uh, the protons, the electrons, the neutrons, you're going to need to know this to answer these questions on the test. Um, what is the periodic table? How is it organized? How many elements? Understanding how to read the chemical symbol and what it means, very important. Uh, you know, how it's organized by groups and periods and then Elements that are similar are grouped together, such as metals, non-metals, noble gases. So become more familiar with these things about the periodic table. While you don't need to memorize it, you do need to know kind of how it works. Uh, for properties of matter, um, you know what matter is. What is matter? Um, physical and chemical properties. Uh, what is a physical property? Those are things like mass, volume, density, color, solubility. Uh, what is a, a chemical property? These are things like acidity, toxicity, rust, combustibility, flammability. Those are on the chemical property side. Um, and then you've got extensive and intensive properties. So be familiar with all that when it comes to properties of matter. The next thing would be states of matter. So there are four states of matter and that's gonna be solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. Um, and so know how do these change from state to state because they don't stay the same. Uh, obviously, you know, a, a liquid can become a solid like uh, water to ice. You should have a good review of the kinetic molecular theory. Um, and this explains how gases behave based on the idea that they are made up of tiny particles, uh, molecules uh, that are always moving. So be familiar with kinetic molecular theory. No heating and cooling curves. So what happens when heat is added or released to something? And when it comes to chemical solutions, we are needing to know what kind of solutions exist. So these are things like saturated, unsaturated, solid soluble, insoluble, um, aqueous. Uh, we need to know the dilution and the concentration of solutions. So these are getting into the things like molarity, um, which is the number of moles of a substance in one liter of solution. Um, and then you've got the percent composition by mass. So knowing the mass of a solute uh, per unit mass of, of the solute. Uh, there's the mole fraction, which is moles of a solute divided by the total number of moles in the solution. Uh, there's diffusion and osmosis. Diffusion being the tendency of molecules and ions to, to move toward areas of lower concentration until it is uniform. 
and then osmosis is, is, is more around the diffusion of water and the movement of molecules from an area of high concentration to lower concentration. So now we get into chemical bonds, and the most fundamental thing that you need to know is what are ions. And, you know, for chemical bonds, um, they are the attractive forces that hold atoms together in compounds. They form uh, kind of through the sharing of covalent bonds or the transferring of ionic bonds or, or electrons between atoms. So in addition to that, you'll want to review cations and, and ions, uh, review ionic bonds, understand how and why bonds form, and kind of knowing what, what covalent bonds are. So how are they different from ionic bonds? You'll need to know the difference between kind of covalent and ionic bonds. Um, now this information will help you, will really, really help you understand the periodic table better once you understand these things, uh, because the periodic table organizes um, all of these elements in a way that highlights their ability to form chemical bonds. So it kind of all starts to make sense when you think about it that way. So next is chemical reactions. And for this, you're gonna need to understand uh, the valence electrons and their role in reactivity. Uh, what are the types of reactions? Uh, synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, and combustion. Uh, knowing covalent and ionic bonds, we talked about that. Uh, reviewing how to balance chemical reactions. You know, in addition to those things, I would say, what else is there? Um, kind of reviewing what factors influence or cause chemical reactions. So things like temperature change, uh, the presence of a catalyst, and, and pressure, for example, can, can cause chemical reactions. Um, you've got endothermic and exothermic reactions. Know the difference between those two. Um, know what is equilibrium and how it's achieved and know what activation, what, it, what is activation energy, what increases or decreases activation energy. And this brings us to acids and bases. So for acids and bases, you'll need to review kind of what makes an acid an acid and what makes a base a base and have an understanding of the pH scale and what are their characteristics. Very likely you're gonna get a question around the pH scale. Um, so you'll need to know kind of how that works and um, what the characteristics of acids and bases are. Uh, you'll need to know how, how do solutions become more acidic or more basic, uh, how, does, how do neutralization reactions occur, and you'll need to review the pH equation. So we can go over that in a second. Um, lastly, I'd say uh, knowing what happens when water is introduced into acids or bases. Let's quickly review a pH equation. You'll, you'll see this on the screen here. Now, pH, it stands for the potential of hydrogen, and it is a number that tells you how acidic or how basic a substance is. So on the scale, there's a pH scale that ranges from 0 to 14, um, and that's going to be uh, 0 the most acidic, 14 the most basic, uh, but it goes something, you know, 0 to 6 is acidic, so that's going to be like lemon juice or vinegar, uh, 7 is a neutral, like pure water, and 8 to 14 is basic, like baking soda or soap. So if a substance has a lot of hydrogen ions, high ions, the H+, it is very acidic and has a low pH number. If it, is a, if it has very few hydrogen ions, low hydrogen, it's a very basic and, and has a high pH number. So that's kind of how that works. You'll get more familiar with that. You'll do practice questions on that and you'll get better. But that does wrap it up for the chemistry section. That's everything that you'll need to know. And again, before you jump off this, check out the links in the description below. Leave a comment if you have any questions. We'll help you guys out. We're here to help you. So if you like this video, give it a like and make sure you subscribe to the channel because there are a lot of videos coming out for every topic, every subtopic on the test so that you can know what to study. We go over practice tests with full explanations, tons of helpful stuff on the channel. So go ahead and subscribe. And I am looking forward to seeing you guys pass the test. Do come back to the video. Let us know how you scored on the test and we'll see you guys in the next video.